What's up, guys? You can check out our podcast, articles, or our full proxy gallery all at our brand new website, www.itresolvesmtg.com. Welcome, everybody, to what is a very, very, very special box opening of a full booster box of Shards of Alara. Uh, just want to say this would not be possible if it wasn't for the patrons. Uh, they 100% have uh, supported us and to the point where we're able to do stuff like this. Uh, and the, the hope is, obviously, we're going to continue doing stuff like this. Uh, obviously, Shards of Alara is not a cheap box. It's not like your average standard set. Uh, it's not just $100 or anything like that. This is much, much more expensive. Uh, so honestly, uh, from the bottom of our hearts, we really do appreciate and thank you guys uh, for, for supporting what we do. Uh, it does allow us to do stuff like this. So I'm very, very excited. We're just going to go through this and we're going to have a good old time opening it. Uh, I do not have... A whole lot of ideas. I mean, I opened this set a, a little bit originally, but I honestly was not much of a collector at the time, so I don't know what to expect. I know there are some really amazing cards in this set. Uh, the theme is obviously multicolored, uh, in, in, in uh, particular the tricolor uh, shards, as they are called. Uh, and so there really is a lot of some ph phenomenal uh, stuff in this in this set. So. Regardless, we're going to jump into this. Let's see what we get. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this. And again, thank you so much for all the patronage. We certainly appreciate it. So uh, we're going to kind of briefly go through the commons. Oops, sorry. That was a little off camera. Uh, we're going to go briefly through the commons. Nothing too crazy there. Uh, our uncommons. And then our first rare is Cunning Lith Lithomancer. Uh, interesting card. Uh, beautiful lands. And then, of course, these little kind of set cards and things like that nothing too exciting but uh seriously guys um something that you know we've always wanted to do on this channel is just open up cool stuff like this we never really have had the funding to do that until now thanks to all of you guys Ooh, bant charm is great uh salvage titan i remember that card that was such a cool card back in the day um and so finally we're actually able to get to the point where we can open up product like this and hopefully uh, do a little bit more of this and explore some older sets uh, as we go through some of these. So um, that's certainly the goal. I think every once in a while we're going to uh, shoot for posting up a little bit of a poll on our Patreon uh, and letting you guys hopefully vote on uh, what we should open for the next video. So uh, if you don't know uh, or if you're not a patron uh, or I guess if you are a patron and you haven't been on our Patreon page in a little bit, um, we're actually setting up uh, a lot more polls for you guys. So uh, the Patreon people are really supporting what we do. And so the idea behind it is that we want you guys to be able to have a say in what we do a little bit more prominently. Uh, and so part of that is voting on uh, multiple things, in particular this box opening. But also uh, you guys are voting now uh, as we release this month on, um, on uh, the... Patreon rewards every month. Uh, I do want to mention that is not open to everybody. That is solely open to the patrons. So do keep that in mind. Uh, that if you would like to have a say, you do have to be a patron. Um, but it makes sense. Obviously, they're the ones that are monetarily at least supporting what we do. And so we wanted to uh, let them have a say in what they're getting. Uh, we, we do believe here at, at It Resolves Intangible Rewards. Ooh, Blightning. I love that. Uh, intangible rewards and in that way we do give away all the uh, proxies that we have um, and in fact we're doing three tiers now uh, this is the first month that we're doing three tiers which is pretty exciting uh, and so we uh, we thought that this would be a good way to to give you guys the power and uh, let you guys kind of determine what the cards are going to be so uh, we think that that's going well we did get a lot of responses on the first uh, the first round of voting goblin assault that's really interesting because i believe that was an uncommon uh on the reprint that's kind of cool uh our first foil here is mighty emergence that's pretty awesome i'll put that down there um and so yeah we're we're getting a lot of really good responses on the voting and we certainly appreciate it uh it's nice to to know that people are involved and are active uh in supporting the stuff that we do and uh, without it, I mean, without that support, none of what we do is possible. So it's great to have that. Uh, Brilliant Ultimatum, uh, part of a really interesting cycle of some really interesting cards. Uh, beautiful Foil Forest as well. Uh, each of them are uh, representative of individual shards. In this case, it's the Esper uh, shard. But 
there are, you know, Grixis shards, there's the Naya one, there's a couple of other ones. Um, and they're all really, really powerful cards, that's for sure, but uh, very difficult to cast, which I think is interesting. Memory Erosion, very cool. Uh, and we're almost a third of the way through the box at about five and a half minutes in. A lot of really cool stuff in this set, though. I love multicolor cards just in general. I think that's why Ravnica is one of my original Ravnica in particular. Uh, is one of my all-time favorite sets. It's just so fun to open up these multicolor cards and be able to to force yourself to to play a little bit differently than just saying I like red or I like black uh, or whatever. Uh, it's nice to be able to push into different colors and in this case three colors, which is pretty phenomenal. It just makes for a really fun play experience and you get to test out a lot of different stuff, which I think is really cool. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Tide Ho Hollow Scholar, very cool card. Uh, the God Speaker, don't know that card to be honest, but looks really cool. The art is beautiful. Um, so far, I don't remember. I assume, I guess, Mythics were a thing in the set. I honestly, yeah, yeah, they were. They definitely were because the Johnny Vengeant uh, was a Mythic, but uh, really, really cool stuff. Hopefully we get some kind of awesome Mythic. Oh, look at this foil. Hold on. Foil Oblivion Ring. That is beautiful. Absolutely love that card. Uh, really, really powerful. Um, anyway, so yeah, uh, if you guys have any experience with Shards of Alara, I'd be really interested to know, uh, did you play during this time? Did you draft during this time? Uh, ooh, Master of Ethereum, absolutely phenomenal card. Uh, and another foil forest. Love that art, so pretty. Uh, anyway, if you played during that time, I would be really interested to know what your thoughts on the set are. Uh, did you enjoy it at the time? Do you enjoy it more now? Uh, what kinds of things did you enjoy playing most? What shard was your favorite? There are a lot of them. Uh, Ranger of Eos, beautiful rare. And, ooh, look at that. Rafik of the Many, our first mythic, and it happens to be a foil. That is very, very stunning. That's awesome. Uh, one of my favorite uh, Bant cards, actually. Um, Bant's a really interesting color combination, I think. Lots of possibilities with it. Uh, that one being very, very fun for Commander and things like that. Um, but let's see, I'm going to go a little bit faster through the commons now, since we've seen most of them. Uh, oh, there we go. Aether Sworn Canonist, another really, really useful and just super powerful rare. Uh, and then a foil puppet conjurer, uh, lots of foils in this set. It seems that's pretty cool. Uh, they did also do, if I'm not mistaken, not unlike, uh, uh, Throne of Eldraine now, uh, they did do premium packs of uh, this set. Now, I don't know the difference in the, like, what you would actually pull from that. Uh, unfortunately, I just, I didn't ever open any, so I have no idea, but uh, I was looking into getting maybe one or two of those to do uh, as smaller openings, but something kind of different uh, instead of just, like, our normal pack openings for, like, the Cracker Pack or something like that. I thought that might be kind of a fun way to do it. Um, let me know if you guys are interested in something like that. I want to push different opening videos uh, as we go through some of this and as we now have a little bit more uh, room to kind of play with some of that stuff. I think it would be a lot of fun to just see what we can do. Ooh, second mythic, Tezzeret the Seeker. Absolutely beautiful pack fresh Tezzeret. I love it. Uh, super, super cool card. Uh, very artifact focused, fun and cube uh, for sure. Um, and we're getting close to, I think, a little bit over halfway through this pack now, or this box, excuse me. Uh, let's see. Battle Grace Angel, and we have another foil, uh, Hindering Light. Really very pretty uh, art on that one as well. Uh, I love the art of this set. I love the art of like this time period in Magic. Just lots of really cool stuff. Uh, they did a lot of really interesting, like uh, not only like hand-drawn illustrations, but different uh, computer-generated things as well. And our third mythic, uh, Imperial Archmage, absolutely beautiful. Um, so it's it's just so much fun. It's so rewarding to open up these old packs because you see a lot of these cards, like, <clears throat> excuse me, even at the common level, things like Wild Nakadal, which is a card that obviously sees play in things like Naya Zoo and things like that, which is fun. <clears throat> uh, and it's because it's at common, you actually see it pretty regularly, uh, which just makes it more exciting to open these old packs because... Uh, there's almost at every single rarity, there's something that you can be, you know, a little bit more excited about. And a lot of times in, uh, in especially newer packs, uh, or packs of standard, you're kind of just searching for that one rare, uh, when you open a pack. 
uh, because the value isn't necessarily all the way through uh, the common, the uncommon, uh, the rare, and then the mythic uh, slots. Now, that's not always the case, obviously. That's a bit of a generalization, but uh, that definitely tends to be the case uh, as we go through a lot of the newer sets. And so to go through these old ones where a lot of these cards have, you know, already found their home uh, in some kind of deck is actually really, really fun just because it's so it's so nice to kind of get that pack fresh wild nacodle or that pack fresh fate stitcher which was a really fun combo piece for like jeskai ascendancy which if you didn't play that deck was just a very very silly combo deck it was absolutely ridiculous and just did a lot of fun stuff sorry by the way we have our dog in here at the moment so uh she's a little barky but fate stitcher there absolutely awesome realm razor very very cool uh and we are on our last stack of packs here so we are getting down to it uh again as we do finish out this box i really do want to thank all the patrons uh again obviously um it's been said that without you guys we couldn't do this but genuinely we did not expect to have the uh the support that we did uh when we initially set up the patron and obviously we wanted to to make it something that you guys were enticed to do, which is uh, where the, uh, oh, Sphinx Sovereign, beautiful card, uh, which is where the proxies came into play, but it wasn't about uh, selling proxies so much as it was um, finding a way to give you guys that tangible reward versus just saying, well, we'll do a new video or, or something like that. I think there's a, a healthy medium uh, where you can kind of do both, and that's... I mean, this video is proving that where we're able to do this kind of stuff uh, because of all that. So I just think that's really awesome. We really do appreciate it from all of you guys. Uh, and let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven packs left. We'll see what we get. Um, let's see. Uncommons here. Ooh, Knight of the White Orchid. Absolutely awesome card. It's just so fun to look at these old cards and cards that I didn't even knew, know like existed, to be honest. Sphinx, Sphinx Sovereign, I did not know was a card. Uh, I'll just go ahead and be honest. I had no idea that that was a card. I have no idea that Skull Vulture is a card until now. So it's stuff like that that's so fun to like go back and you get to see all these old mechanics, all these old cards, all these old uh, pieces of artwork, truly, uh, and see how they were played at that time. I think that's so fun. Uh, and definitely something that we are going to try and push uh, in the future. Ooh, Ad Nauseam, uh, part of a great, great uh, modern combo deck. Uh, and I guess Legacy and uh, Legacy Storm and things like that, too, every once in a while, which is pretty awesome. Um, let's see, last few packs here. Jun Charm into Punish Ignorance. I believe that's our second one. I think we opened one in pack two as well. Um, really interesting counter spell. Don't know that I love it, if I'm going to be honest, but that's okay. Uh, last three. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Mael the Anima. This is actually a card that we did a proxy of. We have not yet given it away, but that's definitely part of uh, the list, if you're interested. I think that card is beautiful, actually. I think it's one of the prettiest pieces of art in the game. Uh, let's see. Second Spectre, if I'm not mistaken. And a foil uh, Battle Grace Angel. Two foils uh, that were rare or mythic. So we got this foil rare, and then we also got Rafik foil. That's pretty awesome. Uh, and we are up to five uh, mythics. We'll see if we can get six. I really doubt it, but we're going to do the best we can. Uh, let's see. Last pack, guys. We did get a foil. That's kind of nice. Uh, let's see. Crucible of Fire. And our foil... Angel's Herald, so obviously not a rare or a mythic, but guys, this pack, or this box, excuse me, was phenomenal. So we got the Anima, we got Sphinx Sovereign, uh, Imperial Archangel, Tezzeret, and Rafik Foil, uh, which is pretty awesome. Uh, we did get the Foil Battle Grace Angel, as well as a huge stack of awesome rares, uh, including Ad Nauseam, uh, the Ethereum Can Canonist, excuse me, Master of Ethereum, just some really, really phenomenal cards. So Guys, again, thank you so much for making this possible. We really do appreciate it. If you are interested in signing up on Patreon, please do not feel obligated, but you are welcome to. Uh, the link is in the description below, so you can check out all the details there. But thanks again, guys. I hope you enjoyed this box opening video, and here's to hopefully having many, many more as we go through.